Hello, welcome back to Beers, Bourbon, and Games. I'm your co-host, Mike, and with me is the not-so-sad... The excited Conqueror, Corey. And we are going to continue... Continue? Continue our modding? We're going to continue our modding of stuff because we just, we just can't quit. It, it's, it's an addiction at this point. I'm, I'm sorry. We just need that mod fix. But what we're going to do is our buddy Conqueror, Corey, over here, when the Steam Deck first came out, he bought his... the uh, um, 256. 256, but he bought it, like, almost launch day because he was able to get a hold of one at the 256 uh, version. But the issue is, is that games nowadays take up a lot of space. I mean, what is it? Cyberpunk took up 96 gigs by itself. It's something stupid. Yeah. So it's a lot. And that space runs out really, really quick. So what we're going to do today is we are going to install a one terabyte SSD for it. It's important to note that this is the 2230 format SSD. It had to be the really small ones, which... At the time when the Steam Deck came out, due to a certain, a certain worldwide emergency, those were hard to find. Yep, and about fifty dollars more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> but now he can download games to your heart's content until this fills up, and then we'll do a follow-up video of us installing a, a two, and then a three, and then maybe a, a thirty-seven terabyte at that point when we're in the, uh, you know, nursing home. I mean, why not? Why stop there? But while we're at it, he also has scratched the back of his. So we are going to put from our friends at Jessix. I know this wasn't a sponsored video, um, but we just really like the company because they've done some neat things. Has released a uh, couple of transparent backings to replace your the back of your Steam Deck. Uh, this one is the horribly ugly uh, color blue instead of red. Uh huh. Go it, on. It's uh, it, it's blue. <laughs> But this is, uh, this will replace the back. And the cool thing about this is there's actually a heat absorption pad on this that's not on the Steam Deck because the back of the Steam Deck actually gets pretty hot from just a lot of play. Um, the metal pad on the back of this thing does get kind of hot too, so you kind of got to watch out for that, but it at least dissipate heat better than what we have currently. What, we're, what we think anyway. We'll find out for sure as we're playing it. Um, let's open the sucker up though. All right, let's do it. Let me borrow this. All right. Jassic does not disappoint with their boxes being very simple. Um, we get this little part here. Please wear finger gloves before removing housing. Oh, I guess it means the back of the Steam Deck. I was like, hey, wait, before I remove this, can I not look at it? Okay. It's got the buttons on it. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, I actually like this color. Uh, I'm pretty, pretty surprised. It's actually pretty neat. Actually, I like this. Of course it's neat. Blue. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, the pad feels really, really good. It does have a thermal, uh, pad there that I'm not going to touch. It has a little plastic film you get to remove. Um, Got the buttons back there. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping they're the same quality as the back switch buttons. I really can't tell the difference. They feel the same. Maybe maybe they are the same. I don't know. Oh, there's more buttons. Oh. These are bigger or smaller, I guess, depending on if you have tiny hands or bigger hands. It makes it easier to grip onto. That, that's actually kind of neat. Okay. And, and apparently you get... Uh, oh, actually... Pretty nice screwdriver kit and a separator. Is that finger condoms? That's the finger condoms. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, and uh, replacement screws. The cool thing about this is it actually tells you where the screws go. Oh, that's neat. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, sometimes we do mods on this channel and they don't do that. We're looking at you, Game Boy Slate. And it makes everything really, really hard. And some certain of us still have nightmares about that build. Nightmares. The doctor told me it can't hurt me anymore. <laughs> but that's about it on this. I mean, that's that's pretty neat. Cool. I have to say I'm pretty excited about doing this. Um, you ready to go? Yeah, let's do this. Let's go. Okay, so we're gonna start off with everything, getting everything we need together here. So you see, I have my Steam Deck, I have the the new uh, SSD, I have my dock that's gonna come in later, and of course my case, I'm gonna do something with. So 
we'll start with opening the uh the j6 case um we kind of showed a little bit about earlier in the video but it comes with everything you need everything uh it has all the screws it has the finger condoms Oh, yes. <laughs> Remember, kids, practice safe assembly. Always oh, use crap. finger condoms. <laughs> uh, side note, those were actually really tight on my fingers, and it actually started put a, put a dent in, dent in my fingers. It was pretty painful, actually. <laughs> but uh, now I, I'm going to do something here. That's, I kind of played it fast and loose, but as you can see, Turn off your Steam Deck. It's very important. Do not leave it powered on when you're doing this. Do not leave it in sleep mode when you're doing this. You're just begging for problems. I put mine in my case like that. Those that know what static electricity is and everybody who works in IT, including myself, uh, I'm probably going to get smacked for doing that. But just do it at your own risk. What I do like about the case is you can see we do have the screws that they include, and it actually tells you on the picture where the screws go. So you don't have to do a whole lot of thinking on the outside of the case. And be sure to remove your SSD, uh, your SD card, SSD, your SD card, because when you go to pull that case off, you will break it if you do not remove it. So you've been warned. We're simply just going through here, uh, unscrewing the screws. Really simple, easy to do. Um, I always like to keep track. So if you notice, I'm putting the screws under the picture where they go. So that way I know where they go back. Uh, mainly because I think the ones that Valve have are probably higher quality than the ones that are coming in this set. So you can see those are a little bit longer, so that's why I'm separating them. Very important when you do work on handheld devices like this, uh, because the screws are smaller in various sizes. Um, and if you don't have some form of organization, you're going to cause yourself a headache down the, down the road and putting them into the wrong holes can actually damage the product yes so don't play so it fast gotta, and loose like i do <laughs> so now we got a squeegee what you can do is start at the top near the triggers there's a there's enough of a gap there that can get you some leverage to start popping that back case off so as you run that spacer through it should start to separate you can see here i had a little bit of trouble because i was using the cheap spacer that was included if you have an official toolkit this will be a lot easier on you so you see, it's starting to come loose here as I'm, as I'm, I'm just, just got to work with it and, and gently don't go all He-Man on this and just rip it off. You're begging for problems there. So you just kind of have to work with it until it comes off like you see here. So as far as the SSD, uh, there's only, there's a couple of screws there. Yeah, I believe there's three. So we're just going to first remove that tape. There's some tape covering one of the screws. Peel that off there, set it to the side. And you can see I'm kind of examining it there because I'm blind. I have to get a little bit close to see where everything's at. So I'm going to set those up there to kind of separate them out. Again, like I said, just, just keep them separate. Another trick you can do too is take a picture of it before you take it apart. That helps. Once you get the screws, it should just lift right up there. Keep that thermal paste on the thermal pads on there. That's very important for your for your cooling performance. And right there with that metal well, the aluminum sleeve is your SS uh, your SD. But you're not going to unplug it just yet. What we need to do is pull peel back this little black tape piece. It's like cloth tape or something like that. And there's a cable there. There's a ribbon cable that you need to pop up. That is your battery. It is very important to disconnect that before you start working on this. So you're going to see I'm just going to fidget with it here until I can get it disconnected. And it's very little wiggle room. Once you get disconnected, you do need to hold in the power button for a few seconds. That should drain any residual power that's in the unit. Now with the power drained, we're going to remove the M.2 screw. Pop the M.2 out. And it's just a matter of really sliding it out of that aluminum casing. So we got our new one here. That's the Corsair one terabyte. It's really great, by the way. It's a lot faster than the stock one. So I recommend, and it's like 60 bucks on Amazon, min win. I'm gonna slide that in here. 
there's a certain way it goes so you like you may have to play with it just a little bit to get it to slot in there but once you do you should be set Unless you're me, of course. All right. So just like any M.2, it, it slides in at an angle one way and it goes down. You should not have to force it. It just simply goes in and connects. Then we're going to tighten the screw to secure it. Then we are going to basically trace our steps back. So you will notice what I did here, I actually did something when kind of telling myself, I forgot to reconnect the battery when I put the case back on. So if you go to turn on your switch, it doesn't turn or your steam deck, it doesn't turn on. Check that battery cable. <laughs> here, I was trying to be nice and leave that out of the video. <laughs> yeah, I might try to get my back like a good friend. But as you can see here, there is a little plastic film there on the back, the thermal pad. Peel that off before you connect it and then it should just snap right in place. I really like the the translucent blue. It's, it's a really nice touch. So I'm just checking the fittings there to make sure that that seam is connecting properly. Um, and then I'm just taking my screws and I'm putting my screws back. I think there is one of these I accidentally I, I started to strip and I actually took out and replaced it. It's easily done with screws that small. Yeah, you you can't you, you can't you can't be too forceful with them. So screwing the back case on is super simple. You just like I said, it's just really backtrack in your steps. The the key thing there is just make sure you make sure as you change your SSD, you're going to start working backwards. In the same steps. Yes. So now we're going to go to the Steam's website. The cool thing is, you can uh, we're going to put a link down below, but you go to the website here, uh, and they'll actually have a link where you can download the recovery image. Uh, it's, it simply says here, and click. It'll take you to a page where you accept their terms and conditions, and it downloads the file. I think it's around 3 gigabytes, I believe. Mm-hmm, I did. All for Gaben. And that'll take some time, just depending on how fast your internet connection is. We do have some other tools we need, though. If you're on Windows, you will need to download Rufus. Uh, this is a program that actually burns ISO images to your, or bootable in images, to flash drives. So you can either set up a, um, a portable executable or actually install it. And while you're at it, go ahead and get ad blockers so that way you don't get ads like I do whenever you try to go download this stuff. <laughs> so we're just going to save it there. And we'll use that. Now, if you're on Windows, you or if you're on Mac or Linux, you have to use Belina Etcher. Um, I say just use Windows. It's just me. So Rufus is a very simple program. Essentially what you do is you select the flash drive you want. Make sure you have the right one selected. You do not want to overwrite like a portable hard drive or something else you got connected. So make sure it is your USB drive that you have connected. Um, and then you'll simply use the menu to select your ISO image or your bootable image, the Steam image that you just downloaded. And then you'll click uh you'll click the format and it'll it'll start actually formatting now you will get a warning prompt that it's going to delete everything on that flash drive if that is the correct flash drive it is okay to do so but again just double check the option that you selected this part can take a little bit um it just depends on how fast your computer is uh, but it shouldn't take no more than I'd say at most 20 minutes, if that. That's 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 being really generous, by the way. Really, really generous. Oh, 
Once it's done, you're able to click close and you will now remove your uh, flash drive with your Steam image on it. Going back to the Steam Deck, one thing we need to do is you can actually, uh, I use a dock, but you can use an adapter. But um, when you turn on your Steam Deck, you can hold up the volume down and the power button, uh, the, then press the power button. It'll actually take you into the menu, the BIOS menu. From there, uh, you'll want to select a boot from EFI USB device. This will actually boot the Steam OS desktop environment from your USB. And then there's an option, re-image Steam Deck, that performs a full factory reset. That's what you'll want to do. So you'll just follow the prompts there, and it will literally start formatting it for your SSD. And there's my head. Because <laughs> again, I can't see. But at this point, you're, you want to leave it alone, let it do its thing. Now what's going to happen is at the end of it, it's actually going to take you through, uh, you get, I got a prompt there to click OK once it finished. It's going to take you through the first time user experience when you log in. And that's how you do it. So I, I hope you found this uh, video helpful. Um, super easy process, really. It's shockingly easy to do this. But I'm glad Steam, I'm glad Valve thought of it. So as you can see, I'm logged back in, and now I have a terabyte. Well, 900 and some, but you know what I mean. Well, here it is. Um, wasn't that bad? Uh, I just kept making mistakes, as you saw. Uh, my one that aggravated me the most was the fact that I got it all the way together. I hit the power button. I look at Mike and go, why is it not turning on? And I remember I disconnected the battery. That was great. Um, upgrading the heart, upgrading the SSD M.2. Easy, easy. Um, not, I don't think you have to be really technical at all. The only thing to be aware of is make sure you're grounded. Now you, you did notice I had the, the finger condoms on one hand and not on the other. That's because we, I was grounded already. Um, but I was, I was being very careful not to try to touch the electronics with the same fingers. But, um, uh, the ones they included started cutting off the circulation in my fingers. Like I was getting part way through, and I told Mike, my, my my fingers are getting numb. <laughs> and, um, but I had to put I had to take this on and off so many times because I kept making mistakes. I almost pulled off the thermal pad. Um, but I finally got it in there correctly. Um, it was really easy to connect. It had I mean just really straightforward. Just those screws right there. And it looks then, good then too. Then I actually like the way it looks. Up. Um, it's got a really nice aesthetic. Uh, the pad here, it actually draws some heat. Now, that's the one thing I'm kind of curious. I haven't really put it through its paces yet, but there was one point I handed it to Mike, and it, it got to that point where you almost felt a steam from it. From yeah. Heat. So I suspect when this bad boy, if I, if I load up some Chaos Gate Demon Hunters on it, it's going to get hot. Like, I'm talking fry some eggs on it hot. Very slowly, but fry some eggs on it. Um, but all, all in all, though, I do like the design. It almost, almost... Makes me want to put up clear blue on the front, but that's a much bigger job because you've got the screen and everything that you're going to have to rip out and then replace. And I, I think I just like the black and the blue. Personally, I think it's... Uh, I think it looks great. I really do. I'll be interested to see like how this how this goes. Like you said, it was, it was kind of hot when we are touching it, but at the same time, your fingers really shouldn't be there when you're playing it pretty heavy. Unless you just happen to reach over, I guess, but... And then, like I said, they got that magnetic fan that, that connects to that and blows air on it, so that'd be kind of cool. Uh, I didn't opt to get the fan model, but uh, magnets. I might actually do it. But yeah, like I said, it was uh, twenty dollars for the case. I caught it on Prime Day sale, um, so I, I really liked it, and it uh, went on good. And got a, I got I got space on my on my drive now, so I'm, I'm I don't have to compromise when it comes to my games. But let us know what you think. Did you put a back plate on yours? Did you customize it? Give it some flair? Uh, did you upgrade your M.2. If not, we hope this video helps you. Um, it's, don't let, don't be intimidated by it. It's a surprisingly easy process. But uh, as always, I'm your co-host, Conquer Corey. And I'm Mike. And we'll see, see ya. ya.